Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Come check me out. I am Facebook Live as well as on WBLCSports.com. Make sure you have downloaded in advance the iTunes app or the App Store app. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, welcome to the Rude Dog Show. I'm Rudy Reyes. I am your host. Look, it's a Monday. Yeah, I know. You're thinking, gosh, don't remind me. If you weren't ready for it, you knew it was coming. How did you not wake up in the morning and not know that it was going to be Monday? Okay, fine. Enough with the rubbing the salt into the proverbial wound. It was filled with sports. Whether you were an NBA fan or maybe even an attic fan, attic, yeah, see what I did there? Fan attic. It's early and often, ladies and gentlemen, that's just how it is. Deciding whether or not Boston. And the win yesterday was a fluke by the Avery Bradley two-second shot left to win the game. And I'm talking about game three. Everybody knows what that is already. You should already know. There should not be any question about who's going to win this series, or is it? Or is it? Good questions come from lots of different people. And look, if you weren't tied up in the NBA, you weren't busy watching what's going on in the NBA, you were certainly watching the Anaheim Ducks take on the Nashville Predators in a losing effort. And, well, as you would guess, Nashville leads 3-2. to two. This has been a very topsy-turvy matchup. We'll talk about that a little bit more as the show progresses. But on the other side of it, in the Eastern Conference, you have the Penguins who went on an early scoring spree, scoring four in the first against the Ottawa Senators, and now they own the series at 3-2. So you could have taken it to the ice as well. Let's start off with the NBA, because I know everybody's really hot to try yesterday's game, game three against the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and the Boston Celtics was not for the faint-hearted. But if you believed in rally monkeys or even LeBron's scoreless fourth quarter or maybe even all game long, you had to believe that the command would belong to the Cavaliers considering they had been playing very well at home, 30-7 and seven on the homestead. However, entering the finals, the Cavs were losers of four games in a row. It's amazing to think that the Cavaliers would not would not lose at home. But they did in a very last second, well, let's just say two second fashion. However, when you look at the suggestions that people had made despite the ugly post game interview, of course, I watched that exchange and I thought to myself, that reminds me of a lot of different types of athletes that we're talking cross, cross the board. And does it even matter if the Cavaliers lost four games in a row entering postseason? Maybe, if you're into that kind of thing. I know I'm not, because LeBron James had been stellar up till, well, yesterday. Is that a big deal? I think people are making more of a big deal than it actually is. As a matter of fact, I was out yesterday. Talk about making things a big deal. To talk NFL for half a second, there was a, a Charger fan who was wearing a you know Charger jersey. He had a hat on, and uh, what's was really sad about it is is that I think he was more disillusioned. He said that uh, Philip Rivers was a better quarterback than Ben Roethlisberger. He also said that the Chargers were going to the Super Bowl and winning a Super Bowl. Now, I'm not going to laugh at the guy. I mean, he did walk away, and every single step he'd take, he was doing this. His head was cocking backwards as if he was chewing or choking on the words he was talking about, how the, how the Chargers were going. Okay, all right, anyway. So he wasn't being a poor sport about being told that he was wrong. He was clearly being told by... A variety of people at a hat store. I'm not going to say the name because they don't pay me to, to <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> they don't pay me to sponsor their, or to drop their name. But we were at a hat store. And this is where I ran into this fellow. And I thought to myself, well, he's being, you know, he's being fan-like. He's probably chewing a little bit of fandom before he entered the door, which is perfectly fine. It's legitimate, and I don't expect that. 
any less, well, out of anybody who's a fan of their team and regardless of what their record has been in recent memory, not the best, but still sticking with their team. So for that, I give him credit. However, the ugly post-game interview is not something I give LeBron James credit for. And it's kind of interesting that he went on to win a uh, PWBA citizenship award. Now, I don't know what the criteria is for that. I really haven't had time in all actuality to find out what that is. But it's a very prestigious award. And you can flip the script and say, you know what, it reminds me of somebody in the NFL last two years. You guys should already know where I'm going with this. And I'm talking about Cam Newton. Cam Newton himself, on a post-game loss, he had every reason to feel the way that he did, but the way that he did it was in question. The way that LeBron James did it after receiving a citizenship award, and clearly it didn't matter to the Celtics. They didn't care because they took them to the hole on a 20-plus point rummage to basically win this game. Now, you may want to consider talking about being LeBron's, you know, bad bad moment. It's a it's a moment in time where he will always go back and think to himself, you know, maybe I need to do this a little bit differently. Maybe I need to address this a little bit differently. Maybe I can could have answered the question a little bit more uh, not so dramatically. Maybe have some some type of better conversation, a, a, a better approach a better thought to the process as to whether or not his decision was right in handling it how he did. I understand nobody likes to lose. I don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose. Nobody likes to hear no. Nobody wants to hear yes. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't work that way. That's not reality. It's not life. That's not the way decisions are made. It's based off a a hip check and say yes without looking at anything else without even looking at the information looking at the stats looking at what LeBron James himself has done he said 39 wins and one loss one loss do you expect for his team to carry him no I don't should they have been the supporting cast to make sure that they do get the W, not solely relying on LeBron James? Yes. I'm trying to think of the gentleman who was sitting next to him. His name escapes me. But he was sitting there straight face. He had nothing to say. It's almost as if everything ran through LeBron James in Cleveland, and in all actuality, it does. It does. Because if it didn't, other people would have answered a question that was applied to them. Well, LeBron James likes to take control over media interviews. Why? Because he feels that he has something to say. That nobody else has anything else to say. He's going to put the weight of the world on his shoulders. And yesterday, he had every reason to recognize that he did a very poor job. Poor job. Poor job. No one likes to lose, especially when you have the Celtics on the ropes. Until the bounce, the two bounce, was it two bounce or three bounces, heard all around the world from three-point range. It was 106, 108. And that was for the lead. You know, that interview had some parallels on the post game from LeBron James. I mean, he's an otherwise, you know, shiny, glistening star that was dulled out and grayed out in just that moment. A blink of an eye and he was shooting in flames in a downward spiral. And what's even more interesting is that the Celtics had rallied from 21 points down, 21 points down. They had been doing that for, well, zero times during the playoffs. How many comebacks do they have? Not many. Not many. I remember when they were playing the Washington Wizards, Al Horford hit that shot off the glass. And then John Wall 
Step up jumper for three. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Took that to game seven of the semis. Biggest question is whether or not this loss did two things. Sent a stinger to LeBron James or did it send a message to the Cavaliers and LeBron James? The Celtics did in fact need Isaiah Thomas. Look, I don't care the I don't care what member of the media he's in. It really shouldn't matter, Tider. It shouldn't matter at all. You need to treat everybody with respect. Doesn't care if you don't like the guy, he's there to do a job. If he was that much of a homer, maybe he shouldn't have a job. And then in turn, we wouldn't be discussing how much of a, maybe a dumb question that he asked. I don't know. I don't listen to much of what Kenny Rhoda has said in the past, or even in the present for that matter. But I will tell you this. If you know it's a dumb question, don't ask. Just don't ask. Or it wouldn't be media topic. Nobody would be talking about it. Nobody would care what he would say or how he said it. It's the fact that he asked the question. But if you don't want the answers, don't ask the questions. But did the Celtics need Isaiah Thomas? Yes. Yes, they did. They needed him badly. The problem is that he's out for the remainder of the playoffs. But what's more interesting is that you had two guys between Marcus Smart and Avery Bradley who stepped up when they needed to, when their team needed them to. They themselves knew in advance they would have to have a huge game. The only reason why the Celtics won that game is because the Cavaliers let them. LeBron James shooting one for nine. And most of those points came from the latter part of the game itself. Had LeBron James been on fire playing LeBron like basketball, this game would have been a blowout again. Cleveland at that point would have owned this series 3 to 0. Oh, self admitted. Self admitted. He said it to himself that he was not prepared. He was not ready for this game. No matter if you're the best player, in, it doesn't matter if you're the best player in the NBA. The bottom line is, is that when you lose a game, you lose a game because of your own poor play. Or is it? Is it more about the teammates? Should they come to rally behind you because they know that you're down? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Everybody knew it. The world knew it. Anybody who was watching knew that this is not LeBron James basketball. I knew it. I knew it from the onset. I said, he's not going to have a good game. Good question, Tyler. Good question. And I know who this is. Welcome to the Redux Show. This is Rudy Reyes. You have a commentary on the uh, the game that was the Boston Celtics and Cleveland Cavaliers from yesterday. I guess that's a no. Hello, this is Rudy Rance on the Rude Dog Show. Hello? I probably have to try something else. It's not working. Are you there? Not there. Okay. Well, in either case, this was a win to set a mental note. Check. Celtics need to win game four. Check. But I'll tell you this much. The Celtics had medical staff on standby with defibrillators in their hands, charged and ready to go. 
just in case the Celtics did not pull this off. They would have to revive the coach and some of the players, not to mention the fans. But there weren't enough to pass around, so the fans would just have to deal with the fallen and I can't get up conversation. Look, both teams did what they needed to do until that lead break by the Cavaliers. They folded. They relied too much on LeBron James down the stretch. He already knew he wasn't performing, yet they still tried to depend on him. You didn't hear a whole lot from J.R. Smith. You didn't hear a whole lot from Kevin Love. You didn't hear a whole lot from anybody. Anybody. This is a team effort here. If you're not going to play as a team, get off the court and get out of my face. I'm here to win. LeBron James didn't have a good game, and it's common. It happens. It happens. Give me one NBA player ever, 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 ever in their life that's ever stepped on the hardwood and did not have a good game, at least one. I not think so. But they did it individually, they did it collectively, and the Boston Celtics came back with a 20-plus point effort that is something that you that you rarely see against LeBron-led Cleveland Cavaliers. And what's more interesting is that this is the largest lead blown by a Cavaliers team Ever. LeBron James scored 21 points in postseason career. Thank you for the share of the video. This is Rudy Rance of the Rudolph Show, WBLZsports.com. Make sure you download the app as well. If you want the experience, go to SeatGiant.com. That's SeatGiant.com. They share not only the tickets, but the experience. His teams were 49-0 and 0 when they led by 20 points or more. And you're right. LeBron James should feel very fortunate. They put up some numbers. There were some defensive efforts. They played out, but they didn't ball out. Huge difference between playing out and balling out. If you're balling out, you're LeBron James scoring 34 points or more. Or more. In an NBA Finals. Or even in the playoffs, for that matter. You don't score 34 points and other people in your bench aren't producing, you won't win. You can score 100 points. You might win individually, won't happen. As a unit, yes. Yes, it will. And it has. It's happened before. But for the Cavaliers, there was a shining example. That's another good point, Tyler. That... Kyrie Irving led with 28 points. But that's it. I think that Sunday night that the Boston Celtics overcame not having Isaiah Thomas on the floor. Everybody wants to talk about the man up, the next man up, the next guy to stand up who's going to contribute on the floor. Well, that's exactly what happened. I think it was improbable. I, I Down the stretch, this was an improbable win for the Celtics. But that was in the beginning before the ball even hit the court during time session. We're going to try this again. Hello, this is Rudy Reyes on the Rudolph Show. Are you with me? I'll try to get the audio fixed. You'll have to call back, sir. Sorry about that. But I think it was a Sunday to remember if you were the Cleveland Cavaliers.
I think he is awake. LeBron better be awake. Maybe he didn't have his coffee in the morning. Maybe he doesn't even drink coffee. But if he doesn't, maybe he should. Maybe he should. I think the fact that the 111, 108 was a wake-up call. And you're right. Wake-up call for LeBron James. A wake-up call for everybody. Everyone needs to be put on notice here. Not just LeBron James. He had a bad game. What does that mean? Is he my top five all time? Yes. I think it was just more than Wheaties he didn't have, Tyler. A lot more than not having his Wheaties. I think it was more about not being mentally prepared. When you're mentally prepared, that allows you to become physically prepared. You can think you're the best athlete on the planet, but if you're not prepared mentally and physically, because those two are intertwined, you have nothing. So don't even bother. Don't even try. Don't bring it unless you're purely ready in an unadulterated fashion, ready to play. Ready to go. Don't even ask. Don't even touch the floor. Because it's not dry yet. Not dry yet. I think LeBron James has figured out that his miscues in that game, and that's a good point. Maybe his Wheaties wasn't uh, a part of his daily nutritional value. He didn't see any reason to do it. But when you think about what they need to do in the Cleveland Cavaliers, what the Celtics did, reverse psychology, win it. I think this was more about a blip on the radar than anything. You're not going to win them off. You're an NBA team, you're not going to win it off. You're an NFL team, you're not going to win it off. You're an NHL team, you're not going to win it all. That is the reality. That is a fact. That's a fact. But you need to win when it counts. When you need to win, you need to make it count. And that's where the Cavaliers are at right now. I believe the series will end in five. We will find out. Anyway, this is Rudy Reyes on the Rudolph Show on WBLZsports.com. i got to take a quick break. I will be right back. Meet me in the Lions Den at 9 a.m. here on WBOZ Sports page on Facebook. Catch me at 9 a.m. Be there. Or are you scared to enter the Lions Den because you might not make it out? Well, I'm going to make it out every time because I'm part of WBOZ Sports where we got balls. With over 30 years of experience, the smart people call on Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. Interior, exterior, commercial, or residential, Doug Pepper does it all. Is your house looking of? Call on Doug. Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Wash. 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and you'll receive a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Wash. 404-966-3361. Hey wrestling fans, Gary Grinder here letting you know that the Eye of Wrestling podcast comes your way every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on the WBLZ Sports Network. Join me and Martin Hughes as we get you caught up on all the wrestling news and discuss pro wrestling from the classics of yesterday to today. That's the I Wrestling Podcast every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on WBLZ Sports, where we've got the balls. My name is Paul Heyman, and I am the advocate for the most non pg kicker of the P. WBLZ Sports. We've got balls. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electric.
Hey, welcome back to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes on WBLZSports.com. Make sure you've downloaded the app because we are in for another half hour of sports greatness. We're talking NBA Finals uh, and everything leading up to that, for that matter, when you talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers and what the Boston Celtics decided to do without their best player, Isaiah Thomas, who's out for the remainder of the season. Let's try calls again, 206-539-9967 at the Gen Service Hotline. And of course, if you want the experience, if you want more than just tickets, go to SeatGiant.com. That's SeatGiant.com. If you use Root Dog, you will get a little something off. I don't know how much, but you'll get something off. So check them out, seatgiant.com. You know, we're talking about LeBron James and the shooting that was misery on display for him yesterday against the Boston Celtics. Having 11 points of which only three came in the second half. LeBron James went on a a nine shooting and an unusual vanishing act. He's been aggressive when he needed to, except for yesterday. Now, don't forget, there is history involved in the entire process here. And I'm going to run it down. If you want answers and it's possibly not likely you can handle them, LeBron James was a rabbit who would not come out of the magic hat. He was non-existent. He was stating as I had a tough game, period. Not just in the second half, James said, I didn't have it. That's all I have to say about my performance. Is there more than meets the eye here from LeBron James? Maybe not. His ability to shoot and perform when needed in 2008 was MIA. They were on the road in Boston. Sound familiar? It should. He went two for 18. And of course, you're probably wondering, where's high energy with a mental edge? Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. Oh, hey, Rudy. Hi, it's Lou. For a minute, I thought we had a bad connection. Uh, you know, bad connections are what happened yesterday between LeBron James and the Hoop. Those two did not oh, connect. Yeah. That was horrible. What are your thoughts about the game from yesterday? You call that a game? My good for him? Well, that was it was a game. Just, but, but just because yeah. it wasn't him leading the way doesn't mean other people couldn't have stepped up and actually did something about it. Yeah, fourth performance in three years. Well, that kind of alludes me to where I was going next with this. And you might ask where the high energy was in 2010. It was practically non-existent in Game 5 against the Celtics. Sound familiar? Do you recall? Yes, it does. Do you recall the menial eight points that he managed against the Mavericks in Game 4? Yeah. But nobody wants to talk about the wins that he's had Everybody's more concerned about the loss that he had yesterday. And in all fairness, well, was, yeah. the, the post-game interview that he had, the post-game conversation that he had mm. was short and sweet and to the point. Now, I had Tyler on Facebook Live. He messaged and he said that Kenny Rhoda, he stated, was a clown and that nobody respects him in the Cleveland media. And then my reply was, if you were listening, Lou, is that... It doesn't matter who this guy is. The fact is is that Cleveland media, somebody has a redeeming quality they like about him, enough so to keep him hired. Do you think Kenny Rhoda was out of line with this question yesterday? I I I think he was. I mean, you know, he was he was heckled he was heckled by a fan in the locker room saying how how bad he was. Look, anybody can have a bad game, even LeBron. Yeah, but in the finals he's had three bad games. Is this more about a guy who's trying to find himself ultimately, or was this just somebody who just had a bad game? Nah, somebody just had a bad game. You're right. He did. He just had a bad game. So, so rare, in fact, of him having a bad game. It's like me going to a restaurant and ordering a rare steak. Not going to happen. I want my stuff well done. And in game five, this will be well done. 
And then at the end of the game, people are going to stand up and clear and chap and say, oh, good, good job, good game. They're not going to talk about the loss. This is going to be a yeah. short memory for them. And for fans, it's also a short memory, probably as short as for them than anybody else, anybody else in media and anybody else who is not a Cavaliers fan. Tyler made a good point. He stated this game, this series will go to five, and I agree. What are your thoughts? Do you think this will go to five, or do you think Cleveland will will default and break another heart? In well, it's going five. It's going. It's only five anyway, because now a sweep is now out of the question, because now it's two one. So it's going to go to five. I'm thinking it's going to go at least. I'm thinking it's going to go to at least six. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe four one. It, it's going to have to. It's going to have to, because at the rate that LeBron is playing, because it's just one game, if everybody wants to base, I'll put it this way, if you want to base this on just one game, at one game alone, you're foolish. You're absolutely foolish. No way to suggest that LeBron James will have two horrible back-to-back games in the playoffs. It's not existent. Tyler made a good point here, Lou. He stated he had the question sometimes as to whether or not the games that happened to be lost by LeBron James is somewhat uh, on purpose. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? No, no. On purpose? No, not. No, not going to happen? That was not that on purpose. No. Not at all? Not in any way, shape, or form? It was, oh, they threw the, they saying, oh, they threw the game. No. That, that's what the case. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, it's just kind of odd. When you think about the timing for which he has lost games he needed to play and win in, he lost them. Two against the Celtics, one against the Mavericks. Is this something of a of a mystique? The LeBron James mystique? Or do you think that sometimes somebody just needs more from your cast? Your J.R. Smith, your Kevin Loves. You're Kyrie Irving. You do. You need more from the you need more from the players. I mean, he's not going to be able to do it alone all the time. You need more help. And the defense was was poor. It was. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. But it was poor at no, best. No, Thompson said, not me. <laughs> it was poor at best. However you slice it, it was poor at best. My belief is this: if you want a clutch, consistent NBA athlete that's done it for three years consistently. LeBron James has been much better. People forget he sliced up defenders, including the Raptors. Yes, I'm throwing you guys under the bus. He made 30 straight point games, ties my my top three. Greatest players in NBA history, Michael Jordan, Mm -hmm. ties his record. A mind-blowing 10 straight games of 20 points and at least 50% shooting from one of my additional top five scorers, he'd have to be number five on that list, the skyhook creator, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Okay? So, Sunday was very remarkable. It was unheard of that the Celtics would get a win against the Cleveland Cavaliers, but they did. Especially coming back from 21 down. 21 down with your best player on the court trying to find himself from before the game ever started. Now, we know that emotional things can can help you. Or yeah. emotions can hurt you. Emotions certainly help. Isaiah Thomas, with the loss of his sister, may she rest in peace, mm-hmm. yeah. he decided to come back, and now he is not on a comeback. He's done. Tyler commented, he said that that you can make an argument that Kyrie Irving is more of a clutch player than LeBron is. Uh, I believe that. That 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 has validity. I mean Kyrie Irving has more fast break opportunities to, than LeBron James, but not much. His ability to finish off plays from jump shots of his choosing, yeah. But LeBron James has done that too. Do you think that it could be a valid argument, Lou, to state that both of these players are probably very clutch one and two or two and one. I, I think it's a very, I think it's a very uh, good argument. I think he's just as capable of getting the clutch as, as LeBron is. 
I think LeBron James could be much more from a mental standpoint before coming into this game. But you know what? It has been. It was. It's over with. And it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Time to move on for LeBron James and not worry about what other people say. If, if you were so worried about the media, you would have pulled a Russell Westbrook and told people to get out of your face or push the camera with your hand. But he doesn't. He sits there and takes a loss like a man. Recognizes that it wasn't his best performance. Calls himself out. Saying, you know what? This is all I have. This is what I can do, and I know that I can do better. The one thing you learn from failures is how to be better, how to overcome the negatives of your game, whatever that is. If it's golf, then get better at golf. Right. If it's tennis, get better at tennis. If it's being on the radio, get better on the radio. And don't be afraid to ask the question, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? I ask myself that question every day. As long as you ask yourself that question and not too worried about other people asking you that question, you're better off. Yeah. So let's let's switch gears here. Before I do that, I have to give a a shout out to SeatGiant.com. Lou should go to SeatGiant.com. You want tickets in the East Coast? They got them. Anybody who wants tickets to the West Coast? They got them. SeatGiant.com. Use the code RUDOG. You get a little something off of your purchase price. I don't know how much because unlike other people, I have my tickets in advance for the Metallica concert in July at the Rose Bowl. Wow. Yeah. Ain't that nice? I went back in 1991. Nice. Where did you watch it? Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> We're not talking about ages here. We're talking about sports. But you know what? Father time is undefeated for a lot of players. I think LeBron James has at least three more years left in him. Yeah. At least three more years. Why? Because he's on the wrong side of 30. I'm not I'm not bashing him. I'm just really stating the fact. He's already lo- losing his hair, like most greats do. Right? Kobe right. Bryant decided to, I don't know, if he, lo- if he lost okay. his or if he just decided to shave it up. Michael Jordan. Some of these guys look good bald. See? Like my head. See this? Go to Facebook Live. I am on Facebook Live. And if you haven't downloaded the app, shame on you. Shame on you, tisk tisk. Go to iTunes, go to the App Store on Google, and download this beautiful app because I'm on it. You want to hear it? You got it. Oh, I'm sorry, Tyler. No Metallica concert for you. This will probably be my last concert ever. No, I'm not here to talk about music, but they're one of my favorite bands. So yeah. this would be my last concert ever, ever, like in my lifetime. Unless they come out with an album that's much better, but we're not gonna we're not gonna go there. No. But what I do want to go, and where I do want to go, is to switch coasts. We were started on the East Coast. Is that the best coast? That's an argument everybody can have. But it's not sports related. We're going to talk about the West Coast Western Conference Finals against the San Antonio Spurs, who find themselves down 3 0 against a packed, deep, hot to trot Golden State Warriors team with Kevin Durant leading the way as the Golden State Warriors basically blew out the San Antonio Spurs without their best player on the court, Kawhi Leonard. And what's honest here about all of this is that I didn't see this coming. I thought that perhaps you would have Kawhi Leonard in the game to make this competitive. And what's even more interesting is that when Kawhi Leonard left the floor, they lost by 21 points. He was the difference maker. And what's even more sad news is that you had more injuries for the Spurs on top of Kawhi Leonard. That's the worst part about it. When you lose your best player and then you lose the guy who's supposed to replace him. A double whammy. You can't you can't get any worse than that. And then and then David Lee going out with a sprained knee. Uh. Your backup. Your backup to a backup sprains his knee. Tyler, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. Spurs do no. not have the ability 
to come back. And unfortunately, the Warriors will get plenty of rest because this is a repeat of last year between, and I've said it before here on the Root Talk Show a myriad of times, this will be a replay of the Gold State Warriors yeah. facing off against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Hashtag defend the land. A dub nation, of course, hashtag dub nation. So, look, I like the fact that the Spurs are in it, but as soon as they're in it, they're out of it. I don't even think that the Spurs have enough to even keep this competitive. And this now... Is for my it is. Yeah. yeah, it's a mind-blower. Well, yeah, but the thing is that I was expecting a much competitive uh, series and, you know... Maybe even going to full seven, but now it's like, forget it. Dang it, you know, just like, uh, let's just get this over with. You know, I was talking about this agony. yesterday before the Celtics and Cavaliers game, and I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe, the Celtics would win. Just maybe. And I mentioned it here on the show before that unless LeBron James is off the court, which essentially he was, even though he was on the floor, he couldn't do anything, defensively or offensively. He had hardly any boards, any rebounds, any assists. He's basically not even there. And I had stated that unless he's not on the court, the Celtics have a chance to win. That's exactly what happened. Maybe I should get my crystal ball out more often. I don't know. But I'm not always okay, right. <laughs> I'm not always right. I'm not always wrong. Tyler chimed in here. Uh Tyler, you can call into the show as well, 216-539-9967. We can take it to the airways unless you're not available to do so. Spurs can win a game tonight. I don't want the Warriors having more rest. Okay, look, bottom line is this. Spurs will end up losing this. Warriors will end up treating this loss yesterday against the Boston Celtics as a blip, a bump in the road, a nail in the tire, and that's it. End of story. There's not going to be any exception to that rule. But San Antonio did match a postseason high with 33 points in the opening quarter, which hadn't been done uh, previously. And then when they were, when, when they're not injured, San Antonio Spurs are probably just as good as the Golden State Warriors. Just as good. I didn't say they were perfectly knotted up. That would be the Thunder and the Rockets in the semis. Those teams were knotted up because they looked so much led by a one individual effort. James Harden, Russell Westbrook. That was it. That was the only comparison. But San Antonio is so deep. But because they have now more veterans on the floor than they do have starters on the floor, uh -huh. they don't look like the same team. Popovich somehow has not been able to answer anything. And in order for the Spurs to come back, they have to win the next three games. I don't see it. I just, I just, do I. I don't see it. Anybody else want to call in as well? 216-539-9967. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show on WBLZSports.com. You can always download the app on the RudeDogShow.com as well. The apps are free. They cost nothing. The only thing they cost is your time to listen. So tune in. Call in on Facebook Live as well. If you want the experience, and I mean the ultimate experience, go to ctiot.com. Use Rude Dog for your purchasing power and get a little something off of your purchase. I find that when you talk about, I'm not going to switch to the NFL, but I will say this. And it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, Lou, if you're listening. I was talking about a San Diego Charger fan who, who nearly had hopes of grand illusion oh, yeah. that his Chargers were going to go to the Super Bowl and win. But 2017-2018 season hasn't started yet, but I think he's biting off more than he can chew there. I'm just throwing that out there. It's yeah, almost I think a, it's a little too soon to tell. Yeah, I, I do as well. But it all you could also have the same conversation about how the San Antonio Spurs will not win one game in this series because they don't have their best players. Matter of fact, Kevin Durant quoted as, I feel I can make every shot because I shoot good ones and I try to get to my spot. And he does. 
he showed some love yesterday from wherever he yeah. wanted it. And he knew how to be aggressive. See, Kevin Durant's mentality is something that most players don't necessarily have. Their ability to, when their name is called, be the consummate professional, be the one to make the difference because a one who doesn't make the difference is a one that's out of the game. That coach will rotate through you like he's making spaghetti. It won't matter. Uh -huh. It won't matter at all. Lou, thanks for the call. My pleasure. So here's the remainder of the Eastern Conference schedule as if it mattered, and it, to some it does. To some it does. I want to watch good basketball. I don't want horrible basketball. I want good, no. fantastic games. Yesterday was a good example of that with Boston winning. Unfortunately, I think it's untimely. I just don't know that any more will exist by the Boston Celtics to win. However, the next game mm -hmm. is tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, in Game 4. And, of course, I have to give my daughter a shout-out. Tomorrow is her birthday. She's not a fan of either team. <laughs> I don't even think she watches sports. She's more into her iPad than anything else. But if you want to be How here... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pass on that question. It just makes me feel old. Okay. <laughs> it makes me feel Never old, and, that, and that's not what I want to do. This age, okay. age, age, is, age is just a number. That's what I say. So, right. and then if, five, if game five is necessary, which at this point it, it will be because of the win... Uh, that will be in Boston uh, on the 25th at 8.30 also on TNT. I think San Antonio could take a page out of the Celtics playbook by getting the next man up to do what they needed to do. The problem is, is that I don't think there is one. I, I don't believe that, that Greg Popovich's vision of what coaching is for the Spurs is unlike anybody else currently coaching in the NBA. And somehow, there is no answer. Of course, we're not talking about Allen Iverson. We're talking about the answer here. And the answer for the San Antonio Spurs is there's always next year. Uh -huh. All three of these games were basically almost non-competitive. Almost non-competitive. Steph Curry making shots when he needs to, clutch threes from wherever he wants, Kevin Durant getting inside of the paint as well as being on the perimeter, Kawhi Leonard, I mean, excuse me, uh, Draymond Green as a part of the process. Uh, you, Iguodala, even though he had a sword, he played limitedly. All of these guys are the depth to the bench. We're not even talking Clay Thompson here. Clay Thompson, probably one of the best clutch shooters on that Warriors roster outside of Steph Curry. That's an argument that can be had as well. There's no doubt about it. I think that Popovich, between Popovich and having Leonard sitting out is not something that he wanted to do. He's the best player on the team. Why would you Why would you even think about starting a guy who's injured? He's got a bad ankle. What is he going to do? Hop along? We can put him on crutches and expect him to you know, run a fast 40 on the hardwood? No. No. Never. He's out. He's out, and he needs to be out. No reason to re reaggravate something that's in the healing process the minute you sit down and recognize it. Your season could be in jeopardy if Kawhi Leonard does not play tomorrow. I don't think Leonard should have played game two. He probably should have sat out. Or... Or yeah. or maybe put in in part of the rotation for them because he needed him down the stretch to keep this game even remotely closer than it was. But they didn't. He didn't. So as far as the Warriors are concerned, Warriors will end up taking this and sweeping, sweeping, get out the brush, get out the shovel. This is yeah. a sweep. Or a broom. Broom, brush, comb, whatever you want. It's going through and it's getting taken to the recycle bin. 
I want to I want to switch over to this number one overall pick for the for the L.A. Lakers because I'm in Lakerland. I have so many issues as to why Ball should not be taken by the L.A. Lakers. He comes with too much baggage. There's too many issues, too many problems, too many questions. Uh, he's a freshman, has yet to prove that he's better than anybody else at the NBA level. He's not. He's not. As a matter of fact, he may not be. Could other players take him underneath their wings? Is there anybody on that Lakers bench that would be willing to to take him under their wing? No, maybe nobody other than Luke Walton, but wait, he's the coach. He's supposed to, to a degree. He's going to show him where the water is. He's going to say, now drink it. If he doesn't drink it, he may as well be drinking Kool-Aid because that's all he's going to be drinking on the outside, sitting down on the bench when the Lakers needed him most. Yeah, Tyler, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I've had this conversation too many times, and I give the Ball family way too much airtime. But I wanted to use the last 10 minutes of the Rudog show to talk about this. Why? Because it needs to be talked about. And I've mentioned it before on the show. I've said it on Twitter. I've said it everywhere. The more media attention you give this clown, cue in the circus music, the way I don't have any. Well, you get the idea. The yeah. more of an issue he's going to find himself in because, like father, like son, Lonzo Ball is not ready to enter the NBA. He should have stayed. His dad is being given all this airtime by everybody. It shouldn't happen. You give this guy a podium, he will rub it in your face, just like he did on Colin Cowherd the other day. You give him a minute, he will take a 100. So I'm like giving it to take a mile, huh? Whatever analogy you want to use, Lou, it's the same thing. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. No, no reason to be sorry. You say it like you say it. You call it like you see it, just like anybody else should. Done within reason, perhaps, but the Lakers should do a lot more sticking up for themselves than rolling over on Lonzo Ball. Yeah, I don't think he's always cracked up to be. I don't think so either, but what makes it even more worse, more of a dog and pony show, is the fact that his dad is a ringleader of it all. And a racist. Now, that's neither here nor there. I don't know that he is or isn't, but, but, but I will say this. Yeah, okay. The amount of time that all these radio stations are giving him is a waste of their time. Talk about dead air. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for the call, Lou. My pleasure. We'll talk again. Have a good week. Yes, sir. Thank you for the call. Thanks. So as much as I'd like to say that, that Lonzo Ball will be good in the NBA, there's nothing to support that fact. Nothing. This is Rude Dogs Rant brought to you by SeatGiant.com. Experience the event, not just a piece of paper. Go to SeatGiant.com. But the more time you give this guy, the more he will make you eat your own words. He did it. He did it on a national syndicated network. Is that even right? Should that be the case? Should you allow somebody, anybody, doesn't matter who it is, come onto your show and disrespect your co-host? Really? That's what you want? That's what you consider? That's what you think about and that's okay? I don't say names here. I just, I call it like it is. I understand everybody needs a podium, but he's been given too much. Maybe he ought to give some back. And he's not in for that. He wants to sell teenagers, college students, $495 pairs of shoes. Yeah, I have the money. I'm going to go give my son $500 to go get a pair of shoes that will end up being in Marshalls for 
Tyler chimes in, says, experts say that Lonzo will be the next magic. <sighs> you must be joking. No. 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 <laughs> no. She is a professional. She has been in the media industry for years. But the fact that Colin Cowherd allowed him to do that means that he doesn't have as much respect for her or is allowing for her to stand on her own podium to prevent further damage. Yeah, everyone is. Everybody has something to say. This is my show, and I can say whatever I want. But I know how to watch my P's and Q's. I know what to say, when to say, and how to say it. I'm a professional. If you want to try it at home, go ahead. You want to call people out? Go ahead. That's your choice. But the repercussions from those choices could be negative, but they also could be positive. Depends on how you say them, when you say them, and who you say them to. Be yourself. Be who you are. Cleveland Cavaliers will take it in five. Warriors will take it in five. Barring a win by the Spurs, which I don't see. So I'll take it in four. And there's a rematch, ladies and gentlemen. There is your rematch. Hey, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hey, go check out SeatGiant.com. You want the experience, not just a piece of paper in your pocket or a piece of paper left in the dash of your car or truck. Go to SeatGiant.com. You get the experience that comes with that. Use Rude Dog and you get a little something off when you purchase your tickets at SeatGiant.com. I have new partnerships coming in, hopefully. That'd be fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you download the app for tomorrow. We're going to have a fantastic show. I was going to have Sinbad on, but he is on tour, on a comedy tour. So I'm trying to get him where I can. Maybe next Monday. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Rudy Rass on the Rude Dog Show at WBLZSports.com. I'll see you tomorrow.